I'm presenting production of powder from an apathetic weed called Royale or Hydrilla vetrata. The, the, the photograph you see on the first page is a photograph of that weed and, and on the extreme left is the leaf in detail of the weed. You can see the leaf has thorns at the epidermis, at the, at the peripheral. Uh, research was carried out by National Fisheries Research, Research Institute in my country and it showed that Royale is the second dominant weed in waters of uh, or in, in waters of Uganda next to water hyphen. Water hyphen is the one you're seeing in uh, where the boat is and fishers are struggling to pass through. Uh, this slide shows somebody harvesting the weed, Hydrilla vaccinata, using that multi hook equipment. Now, uh, simple about the weed, uh, the weed grows very rapidly to 7.6 meters. It can grow 2.5 centimeters every day. It grows in almost all kinds of environments. We are landlocked country, so we have fresh water. It can, it, it can grow in any type of fresh water. It grows in shallow and deep waters, water with high nutrients, high level of nutrients and low level of, of nutrients. It can survive outside the waters for a number of days. And down the sediments of water, it can be there even up to four years when it is still uh, viable. The effects of this weed on waters is not different from uh, effects of other weeds. Of course, when it grows, it it covers the water, it forms a mat around the water, and in essence, the populations under the water get disturbed or might migrate. It causes changes in the water chemistry, the pH, the dissolved oxygen, uh, etc. So it, it, it alters the living environment where it captures and most importantly it, it disturbs people who are going for fishing. In the US it is listed among the federal noxious weed since 1976. Control, it can be controlled chemically by use of chemicals of course it can be called biological control has been tried the the uh, has been tried by by use of viruses bacteria fung insects and other animals as seen in the slide mechanical control has been tried but it is costly and it damages the ecology of of the environment so in short all controls are not effective so the reason as to why I'm selecting it for, for powder production is because it can be controlled by eating. Status of weed utilization in Uganda. In Uganda, in my country, we don't use aquatic weeds. We don't eat aquatic weeds. At least what has been record, recorded as use is the water hyphen where where it is given to animals it is given to poultry but it's not utilized by humans but most terrestrial weeds 
are used by herbalists to produce herbs for different cures. The photograph in, the, in this slide, as you see, those are herbs which has, have been processed by traditional herbalists in my country. So it means this weed can also be processed in the same way. So my main idea is to use it as food process it into, in, into powder and use it as, as a food. Now, worldwide, hydrilla is not eaten in any community, but it can be eaten as a powder. In China, it is, it is cultivated for, for fish, for snails, and for duck farming, but they are not eaten by humans directly. Now, nutritive analysis of this weed was done in India in 2017, and it showed that it is a very good weed which has all essential nutrients from vitamins B1 to B12 and all essential minerals as seen in this graph as seen in this graph. As you can see, they try to, to, to compare the recommended dietary allowance, what our body needs, uh, and what the weed contains. And it shows you that for vitamin B, it has more than our body needs. It has 11 grams per 100 grams calcium, it is higher than what our body needs, magnesium, etc. Its importance, as stated here, it is an immune booster, it enhances our memory, it increases energy levels, health of bones, nails, and teeth, it is a, a detoxifier, it detoxifies. Uh, mm, bad things in our body or it removes harmful waste and toxins from, from, from our bodies it helps to lose weight it is a cleanser and it prevents some diseases like beriberi and anemia which are caused by lack of vitamin b1 and iron now these photos i got them from amazon as this weed is regarded as a nuisance weed in my country. Its products are seen on Amazon and very expensive. This is a powder. Uh, this, the other one is also a powder which is very well packaged and the other one is packaged in a, in a tube. This means it can be processed into something used, useful. Plan for Uganda. Comparative advantage. It is, it is regarded as a nuisance weed. The entire plant can be dried and only water removed uh, and processed easily without any complicated mechanisms. It has all essential nutrients. That is the comparative advantage with it that nobody is using it. It is just regarded as a nuisance. Nobody cares about it. Now, using hydra, hydrilla powder as a food, its application, it can be mixed, the powder which is got from hydrilla can be mixed in beverages, in sauces, and other edible products. It can be used as a salad dress, I just sprinkle on the salads, on the salads and other cooked vegetables. It can be used as a food supplement, as recommended that one teaspoon of tea, tablespoon of the powder is good for your health. Now, here I, on this slide, I try to, I try to show you that 
this is local tea which we take in the morning in my country. It can be added there, the powder. This is a juice which you can get out from Hydrilla, as you seen on Amazon. This is a salad eaten in my country. It can be sprinkled there. This is passion juice. This is groundnut paste eaten as food and and, and it can be sprinkled. This is orange, orange, orange juice. Those are some of the few where I think this powder can be applied and eaten. Now, production process. It involves a simple production process. It involves a simple pro pro production process. You harvest, as I showed you in the second slide, how it is harvested. You wash it using pure water to sterilize it. This is a basin, a local basin, because I am trying to put it in a, in a local way. You can wash it in a basin. This is a local solar dryer. So after washing it, you dry it using the solar panel or the solar dryer at low temperatures. Then after it is dried, you mill. This is a milling machine, but locally, there are other low-cost milling machines which can be used for the same purpose. After milling to get a powder, you can add some flavors, maybe gugumo flavor, that is potato, maybe orange flavor or pineapple flavor. Then you pack it properly in this way. This slide I'm, I'm showing you is a herbal medicine clinic or shop in my country. In my country, most of the herbal medicine clinics are made within the country. So if the powder of hydrilla is marketed as a nutritional additive, it can, with its advantages or with its importances I've already shown you, it can really be utilized by the locals or by the herbalists. Thank you very much for listening.